Today on Us Weekly's Reality Recap, Tom speaks publicly for the first time about Scandal as Lala Kent reveals she suspected the affair. And Sheena Shea shows up to court, but Raquel's temporary restraining order is dropped. And we're breaking down the latest Summer House episode. We've got that plus so much more on today's Us Weekly Reality Recap. Hey guys, Christina Armaldi here with Us Weekly Executive Producer Mandy DeCamp, and welcome to week uh, five of Scandal. I don't even know where we are. <laughs> it, it's getting crazy at this point. I mean... <laughs> The thing is, like, all the cast members keep doing interviews with this podcast and that podcast and this and that. And it's like, it, it's just so much to there's, keep up with. Yeah, it, there's so much information and so many, yeah. just when you thought you knew everything about it, <laughs> something else happens. Tell, um, us but, com- tell us in the comments if you are tired of Scandal. Yes. I mean, we're going to keep talking about it, unfortunately, whether whether or not we're sick of it or you're sick of it. <laughs> I'm just curious if people are kind of ready to move on from this. Yeah. I have to be honest. I'm not <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> still like totally invested in this. Like, I mean, I definitely like can't wait for the reunion. Yes. I not wait. Um, yeah. And they're totally going to drag that out. But I'm a little tired of like, Lala's talking to this person yes. about it. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of is getting a little old for me because right. like Jax, I watched an interview with him yesterday yeah. on the red carpet talking about, how, you know, he knows what went down at the reunion. And it's just like, I'm getting a little tired of the people and their 15 minutes of fame. I agree with you on Directly that. involved. I totally, I, Jack's like, his eyes like bulge out of his head when this oh. happened. He's like, this is my ticket back in. I'm going to throw everybody under the bus. And um, yeah. I love that he's out like partying with them after the reunion. I'm yeah. like, oh, Jax. Oh, Jax. I mean, yesterday, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the interview was with, but he said something like, Time for Tom Sandoval to stop wearing nail polish and man up. I was just like, oh my gosh, Dax, just I know. go away. Go away. Stop. Like, <laughs> stop, stop. Um, but you guys had a lot to say about last week's show, though, um, about the the whole scandal. Linda says it would have been gracious to, uh, and, and about Vanderpump in general. So Linda said it would have been gracious of Katie if she would have just taken the $1,000 and booked another hotel. She wanted her bridesmaids close to her. Any bride would want everything to be perfect, and Sheena's concerns were legit. I get it, but her bridesmaids should have totally, totally booked the hotel well in advance. Also, that hotel is pretty sweet. We get to see oh it. Oh, God. I know. Yes. I can go there. <laughs> Seriously. I love it. Uh, Sarah Marshall said, forgetting Sarah Marshall? I don't know. I uh, Sarah Marshall said, I think people let Lala off the hook more because she is blatantly evil where Rachel <laughs> was a snake and hiding, waiting to bite. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Like Lala doesn't hide her her mean girl. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. This is something like totally unexpected. Uh, yeah. Shay says, I think the main difference and why people are so intrigued by this affair compared to others is that people were people feel duped by Rachel. Everyone thought they they knew what she was about, but it was all a ruse. And with this affair, Ariana was friends with the mistress, so it's an even bigger betrayal. I love that, and I also love that we're calling her Rachel now. <laughs> Everyone's calling her Rachel. I love it. It's really funny. <laughs> I love this so much (laughs) um but there was like we said there was a ton of news this week about the scandal and tom actually spoke out to tmz not surprising um they got them on speed dial over here yeah (laughs) told tmz hindsight's hindsight's always 2020 like if you look back at the at a situation you think of all the things you should have would have done better i love how we had to mansplain what hindsight yeah like we we know what what that means tom Thanks, Tom. Um, He noted that, of course, he would have handled things a little bit differently um, and weighing in on the aftermath of the affair, why people were so, like we were saying, so invested in it. He said, I just think it was really unexpected. And he didn't think that it was going to receive such wide. That's why he thinks it's received such widespread attention. He did say that it has um, affected his business, saying, oh, yeah, of course, it's tough. I honestly don't even want to comment on it, but it has been rough. They say time heals all wounds. So we will have to see what happens. And he, like, talked a lot, but said nothing at all at the same time. Yeah, I'm like, why? You don't want to comment on it, but you're talking to TMZ. Right. Mm -hmm. I just love how he was trying to like stuff a suitcase into a car for like four minutes. That's what all I could concentrate on. (laughs) I was like, what is he doing? Um, He's a mess right now. (laughs) He's such a mess. (laughs) But yeah, you know, Tom with the mansplaining and putting comments on whether he and Rachel are still together. But, um, you know, all signs kind of point to yes. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, speaking of Lola Kent, yet again, (laughs) she revealed Mm -hmm. some um, some of her Vanderpump Rules co-stars caught Tom and Raquel under the sheets before Scandal came to light. 
Uh, she told Jeff Lewis, which that is one of my favorite podcasts. So yeah. If you're going to do a podcast, do Jeff Lewis for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, she said, I was seeing things that just didn't add up. And then I learned after the affair was confirmed, a lot of the things everyone else saw and they didn't think it was red flags, like opening the door and seeing <laughs> Alan Sandoval under covers together. And they're like, oh, this is weird, but they're just best friends. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> like what? Like <laughs> that is like the biggest red flag ever. Like you're like, just... were they clothes? Were they right. you didn't think that was a red flag? <laughs> who saw this and who didn't think this was a red flag? Like is... shorts. I don't know. Probably. Um, yeah. So she claimed the incident between Sandoval and Levis happened off camera while some of the cast was attending a party. Um, prior to their split, rumors swirled that Tom and Ariana were in an open relationship, with which Ariana shut down on numerous ca- occasions. Mm-hmm. Lewis, for his part, asked Kent whether or not she thought that Sandoval misled Levis into thinking he was in an open relationship. While she thought the excuse was a cop-out, Lala theorized that there was manipulation on Sandoval's part. She claimed, I believe that he most definitely did, like I would put my life on it. That's interesting. I mean, is, interesting. is she almost def- not defending <sighs> Raquel, but kind of saying, did he mislead her in thinking that? Yeah. Well, even Jack said on, you know, his uh, press run about this, that he felt like Tom manipulated Raquel. I, I don't think that Raquel thought that they were in an open relationship. She was best friends with these people. They, yeah. She knew the inner workings of their relationship. I don't think that he was like, yeah, we're in an open relationship. We can hook up with whomever we want. Like she's friends with Ariana too. So she knows I, unless they're hiding something from all of us and they really were in an open relationship, which I don't really believe. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think they were. We talked to them on numerous occasions. They said yeah. they weren't. Um, and Raquel would have to be living under a rock to think that they were. Totally. And even like when the first trailer for the season came out and the open relationship rumor happened, like Ariana, before the, even the show even aired, she tweeted about it being like, this is not true. So she wanted to kind of nip this in the butt before it even came, uh, you know, kind of snowballed. So this is just, I cannot wait for this reunion. Lala said again on like, I think it was Amazon, her Q and a that, you know, security had to get involved in the reunion and he had to, you know, kind of break up a fight. Who do you think this fight was between? I don't know. I can't remember if we talked about it last week. So Jax, because I watch all these stupid things. (laughs) Jax said it's between the two guys, which I'm assuming that means James and Tom Sandoval. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Which two guys? I mean, could it be Tom and Tom? Like, could this relationship friendship be be? over? Like then that it was unexpected. Now I don't remember who. But so that would be unexpected. Yeah. It would be. I don't know. Let I us think know in the comments. James and Sandoval, but yeah, I think so too. Know. I'm just, like, yeah, like I feel like they tension would be brewing between the two of us. Obviously, yeah. tension. Yeah. He doesn't like him anyway, so uh, yeah. he hates him. This uh, so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we can finally put this temporary restraining order story to bed. Uh, Sheena Shea appeared in court to defend herself against Rachel's claims that she uh, hit her after the scandal was a reveal. Uh, you know, it's, you know, Ra- uh, Raquel said during the reunion that she wanted to drop their temporary restraining order. You couldn't really do that. Uh, Sheena's lawyer said that, you know, you have to appear in court. You have to kind of see this through. But it seems like going forward, they will be able to film together. Good for us. All's well that ends well. <laughs> I don't think they'll be friends again, but at least they can, they can uh, film together. Yeah. All right. Let's break down this episode of Vanderpump. I thought it was interesting that James's dad was like, you know, binge drinking is a rite of passage, you know, talking to somebody that had like a problem with alcohol, who was sober for a couple of years. It just seemed a little strange to me. Yeah, I agree. That comment, I was like barely paying attention to that scene. And then I heard that comment and I was like, huh? Yeah, same. (laughs) Made me do a double take. Um, Yeah, kind of an odd conversation. James drinking got brought up a few times this episode, you know, whether or not it's a good idea that he's drinking again. Lala clearly thinks it's not a good idea. Um, you know, I guess we'll see. So far, he's we'll be controlling himself, his anger issues, but mm-hmm. obviously, we don't see what happens behind closed doors and all that. No, I really don't know how Ali kind of deals with this. He seems so hung up to me still on Raquel, or just you know, I mean, it has to be hard like filming with your ex he's all the time that, and yeah. having to see them all the time and you know, watching her flirt with other people. And you know, I'm sure for her at times it was hard for her to watch him with Ali, but it's just it's it's odd. She seems like a, a saint. <laughs> this she alley girl. Yeah. She doesn't seem like, 
I don't want to, you know, compare her to Raquel at all because she's obviously different, but I feel like she's a little bit like timid, a little Mm. bit, you know, I don't want her to be in the same situation that Raquel and James found themselves in where like a year, you know, they're engaged suddenly and like, it just seems like she's a little timid. Like I I don't know her that well other than that she really likes astrology. Right. It seems, but it does seem like the girls are a little bit more welcoming to her. They, you know, had her. Because they hate Raquel so much. (laughs) Lala's like, I will do anything to piss Raquel off. I hate her. Um, But it was just so, you know, they were at that lunch and, you know, they were all talking about Raquel and Ariana's like, oh, she looks so hot at my party. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if she was sleeping with your boyfriend at this party at this point. Like, it's so weird. Well, this is one thing get weird because it's like in real life you wouldn't see your ex-fiance every day right because you're on a reality show together you're put in those situations so that's when it becomes a little odd when it's like should they all be in the same friend group still and obviously next season who the heck knows but um yeah (laughs) it's it's kind of like real life versus reality it becomes blurred lines and weird throw this friendship group out the window. And that's what was kind of sad to me last night. Like you were, when we saw like the, the, you know, the surprise bridal shower, they all go, went back to Schwartz and Sandy's. They were having like fun, taking shots together. I'm like, this is not the Vanderpump we're going to get next season at all. Like, it's going to be good. Like it's good. I I imagine, but it's not that same friendship group, which is why we fell in love with this show because it's, you know, Tom Sandoval drop a bomb on him. Totally. I thought the same thing when they surprised Sheena for her birthday and all saying, yeah. well, I was like, oh, God, they smell yeah. like they're all together. Right. They actually seem like friends. They have this inside joke. Yeah. Um, I thought it was fun. And then I was like, yeah, that won't be like that anymore. Definitely not going to be like that anymore. Um, I thought it was so sweet that uh, that moment between Lala, Sheena and Brock and you know, they've come so far from last season when Lala really went in on him about yeah. his, you know, his other kids and his you know, custody situation. And it seems like the three of them have become like best of friends. Three's company. The, yeah. Three's company. I mean, Sheena did, I think, end up moving or Sheena or Lala ended up moving like right by uh, one another. So they spend a ton of time together, but he does seem like a nice guy. He really does. He really does. And and she, he does seem like a good husband and a good dad now. Obviously what happened in the past, we don't really know the full story right. still. Um, he sounds like he made mistakes. I mean, he makes it sound like he made some right. bad mistakes. Um, I still think it's a little odd to be that far away from your children. I personally would never, could never do that. Um, but he's, he's a good dad now, I guess. Yeah. Too, yeah. Too ocean. No, ocean, yeah. sorry. Um, summer, 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 summer ocean. <laughs> sorry guys. When you name your kids summer and ocean, I'm going to confuse them. <laughs> it's confusing. It's confusing at times. And yeah, like going back to James, like saying that he just wants to get engaged to kind of as a payback to Brock and Sheena, just wants to put some babies in alley. It just seems like he kind of wants, at least at this moment, he wanted to like one up Raquel and like throw it in her face and kind of get back uh, at Sheena and Brock. It just seems like he just wants that happy ending so badly. And and, um, you know, it, this could blow up in his face if he rushes it too much. Yeah, please don't rush it. Please don't no. rush it. He's definitely at the stage where he wants to take that next step, I think, just with anyone. You know, mm-hmm. he wants that happy ending, like you said. Allie just seems so young to me. Yeah. She says she does. She seems yeah. really young, like kind of in way over her head with this. Mm-hmm. Like this guy is a little too intense for me. And you see that at the dinner when they're um, finally, you know, at Sheena and Brock's wedding and and James and Ariana get into this intense fight. And she's like, I just got to bow out of this. I'm just going to leave. And uh, which is probably how I would handle it, too, because. Even Ra- Ra- Raquel said, you know, I'm kind of glad that that's not me anymore because I don't want to have to deal with James's antics and I don't blame her. Yeah, me neither. Uh, it's, uh, w- overall, what do you think of this episode? Was it a good episode? I feel like I, I just want to hurry up and get to the end at this point. Yeah, I'm excited for the wedding. Like we're yeah. almost there. I'm excited to see Sheena and Brock's wedding together. Mm-hmm. I want to see what, how the Schwartz and Raquel make out, plays out. Mm-hmm. 
Um, right. I want to see that bed scene of Tom Sandoval that's yes. in the Peterson trailer. Okay. Yes. Yes, Ariana. Um, I'm excited for the wedding. So I yes. uh, is that next week or? I, I would next? imagine it's next week, yeah, unless they drag this one on for a while. Too. I really hope not. <laughs> I hope not either. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's switch on over. Oh wait, my my quote of the night goes to Lala when she was talking about Raquel, saying she looked like a baby prostitute. <laughs> Harsh words, as always. Harsh words from Lala. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's move on over because Summer House is still airing even though it's kind of a blah season which we've been talking about but Lindsay yeah. and Amanda finally sit down mm-hmm. have this lunch that's been uh brewing for some time and she gets upset like uh, Lindsay gets upset saying that she can only handle so much um I don't know whose side are you on on this one I mean she didn't I don't think there was actually a tear shed I right. think she like you know got a little choked up yeah um <laughs> it felt a little bit forced to me to be honest yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the bottom line is they're just not friends anymore. And I don't think there's like we've said, I don't think there's a lot much coming back from this, especially now that Carl's left lover boy. Um, I just don't think they're friends anymore. Yeah. I think that they've all like moved on to different phases in their life. It seems like Kyle and Carl are just trying so hard to make this friendship between the two of them work. Yeah. Um, at least at this point in the summer, yeah, who knows yeah. where they're at now, but I don't know. I also just feel like spad for Carl. Like he's trying, he's still pretty newly sober. I think yeah. it's like a, over a year in maybe, but that's still pretty new when you've been drinking your whole adult life and probably before that. Um, he's going to wineries. They're going to clubs, right. you know, it's just like, this is not a good situation for him and his sobriety. And now Lindsay, we see her drinking this episode pretty heavily or wanting to drink pretty right. heavily and let loose. Um, I, I think I've said it before, but I just feel like they shouldn't have been on the show this season. No, it's like, I probably understand why they went. Obviously they yeah. probably got a nice check for it. Totally. And that's why they showed up. But yeah, like you said, this is not an environment that's, you know, supporting somebody that's, uh, you know, on their sobriety journey. And, you know, it kind of brings up the conversation, like, should Lindsay be curbing her drinking for Carl? Like, should she be able to live her? I don't know. I've, yeah. I've never, I am not in that situation, so I wouldn't know how to handle it either, but I don't, it, it does seem like she's changed a little bit for him, but maybe she kind of had to in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I mean, I don't like I, we to skip ahead to the dinner at the end where Danielle and Lindsay kind of um, get into a little bit of a fight at dinner because yeah. Danielle says that, she's offended that Lindsay doesn't want to go to Montauk or she sees no reason to go to Montauk if Carl is not going with her. And Mm -hmm. I get that. I mean, she's in a happy long-term relationship now with Carl. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't want to go to Montauk either. I mean, for people who don't know Montauk and Southampton, which where I think they're saying in Southampton Mm -hmm. are pretty far from each other. Like, let me just Google it real fast because (laughs) it's not like down the block. Right. Um, Okay. So to drive from Southampton to Montauk is a solid 45 minutes. It's a long time. Yeah. If you're taking an Uber, that's an expensive ass Uber out in the mountains. Like that's going to cost you at least a hundred bucks. Oh, definitely. Uh, Maybe one way. Right. Right. Probably. Um, so I totally don't get, like, if I'm in a relationship, I want to have a few glasses of Chardonnay and go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. To to You're like, lodge. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with you. And yes, yeah, she could. And and when you want to have a girl's night, you have a girl's night, which is yeah. what she wants to do. And she's like, I want to go out with my girls. I yeah. want to have a good time. I don't know. It's so, it, this season is just, I, I, and you see it everywhere. This season is just yeah. not gelling for anybody. Nobody no. is really enjoying it. Nobody really yeah. knows how to navigate this, this group. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it, the new people aren't um, gelling with the, the old, yeah. you know, the, the OGs and I don't know. It's just, it's, it's not working for me. Yeah. You see Sierra doesn't really love Gabby. Right. Um, and then Sam and is it Chris? I don't Chris. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, they barely, you know, they have a few funny one-liners here and there about the guy spitting in her mouth. Right. Well. Uh, <laughs> gross. Uh, but but I feel like nothing, I no substance to these relationships. No, it's like, I don't understand why we just couldn't have Andrea and Luke here. Like yeah, we have, yeah, like yeah. they had, they have a relationship with these people. They could have at least contributed to these conversations yeah. and given their, and Luke is really good friends with um, Carl and Lindsay, like yeah. have the people that were like, we are invested in, you know, bring right. them back. I don't know why they're trying to force these new people every single you know, summer. Like, if Luke was dating Ashley Darby at that time, right. bring Ashley yeah. Darby, like, Seriously. at least I know who she is. And then like, or bring, um, 
the guy from Winter House and Jason. Yeah. 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 I couldn't think of his name. Um, bring Jason back because he might be dating a house. You know, I want to see right. these yes. people who we already know and have invested time into rather right. than like Chris and Sam, who are yeah, I agree. nice people. They're not bad right. castings, but they're just not right for this group. Right. I feel like Summer House needs to turn into Winter House. Like you're bringing yeah. like your all stars in or make yeah. it just like an ultimate trip like we're doing with the housewives but other people in so i don't know they they're gonna have to they're gonna have to rework this one next season um my quote of the night went to danielle if your best friend isn't hard on you then she shouldn't be your best friend do you feel like danielle is too hard on her though this i do yeah i do, too. I do actually yeah. i think at this age i mean they're in their late 30s or yeah. mid 30s i yeah. just feel like like you're adults you can make your yeah. own decisions you know maybe danielle you're not making the best decisions we find out later that her and robert right. broke up um, right. also that relationship was doomed to no offense yeah. like you there's no way he can be the chef at surf lodge in montauk and then the chef at snow lodge in colorado right. and <laughs> make a relationship work i mean i've never i don't think i've dated a chef I don't think so, but <laughs> you know, their hours are insane. And then yeah. a chef at two restaurants, Montauk, the they literally call it the end of the world. Yeah. And Colorado, like, sorry, that's not working. Sorry. It's, yeah. It's just, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And it's not like Lindsay is dating this toxic person. Like he's dating Carl. Like yeah. he seems like a nice guy and like, yeah. you know, working on himself. It's not, I don't know. I feel like they should be happy for them and they're yeah. just yeah. Um, my quote went to Sam. She said, if Kyle Cook is shook by me, I'm doing something right. So that's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if Kyle was like 10 years younger and if this was 10 years ago, yes. him and Sam like would be great fit, not like dating wise, but just like a great fit right. in summer house. But I agree. She's too young. Sorry. Too young. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, check in our social spotlight. Uh, who caught your attention this week? I, I give it to Amanda Batula from Summer House, even though we just trash talked the show a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, she posted a picture of Paige and these cocktails, which just looked freaking delicious. Um, yeah. She said Danielle's dinner parties are greater than. Um, yeah. And I just, I just, this also brings up one other point. They were all like dressed to the nines for this dinner party. And then they're like, let's change to go out. I'm like, <laughs> is this show just all about your wardrobe because you it really is amazing. <laughs> you all look so good like yeah I um I, I also love the comments when Paige is like first I'd like to thank Amanda for making me the first photo of her I really wasn't expecting this and I haven't prepared anything for this moment <laughs> I love it <laughs> um mine went to Craig Conover because it seems like he and Paige are collaborating on a pillow line for sewing down south and and they posted some behind the scenes photos from their um, campaign shoot and they look really good. Yeah, they look amazing. She's definitely bringing some New York flair to his yep. like very Charleston pastel pillows. Which, yeah. By the way, he he started a line for Kroger and I went to my Kroger here this week and we don't have it in Jackson. So I'm pretty upset about that. No. Yeah. <laughs> like get on the line. Craig. Your demo, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate housewives of Jackson need your pillows in Kroger. I love yeah. it. Also, yeah. like Craig with the glow up. Ever since he's been dating Pe Paige, he looks great. He I mean, he always looked was a, a handsome guy, but yeah. he looks really good now. I thought it was kind of funny that she was redesigning his bathroom this week, and he said something like, "Yeah, I'm not good at this." I'm like, "You're not good at this, but you have a home decor line." Yes. <laughs> like, Who's designing your home decor line? Yeah. Then, right? <laughs> not that we really thought you were doing it, but right. <laughs> but it, happy to see it. Seems like they're still really going strong. So good for them. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Reality Recap. Um, please keep commenting on the scandal of it all. Let us know how you think that maybe Summer House can change it up next season. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.